Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel and today I'm going to show you another book box makeover. So let's get started. This book box makeover is going to be one that I've been wanting to create for a while now, but I was waiting on some supplies. These are the supplies I was waiting for, which is glass paint. They are in various colors, as you can see, and also glitter. Not sure if I'm going to use that. And a relief paste, if, if you call it that. That's how I say it. Let's just call it um, a paste. <laughs> and what I want to create with this box is create the stained glass mermaid at the cover, put some lights behind it. And then inside, I would like to create Snape's storeroom for his potions. I have a plethora of potion bubbles in all shapes and sizes. Obviously we don't have to go this big, but this would be pretty cool some of those and then some of the smaller odd shaped ones and uh yeah i think we should just um get started okay uh a lot of terrifying moments later we uh have this uh that came out of there and that now fits in there so I say terrifying because I had to do this with Dremel and the thing gets hot and it's a blade and it's just scary, you know. I just don't want it to fly off or chop my fingers off or... I mean, I took all the safety precautions, but um, laser companies, please sponsor me. Anyway, moving on. This now fits in there. I have a piece of acetate, which I'm probably gonna go, going to double because I want it to be strong. This piece of paper fits inside here so I need the size of this paper to be the acetate and then I can start designing my mermaid on the acetate I've zoomed in for you a little bit as you can see I got this image from Pinterest this image this exact image comes from the coloring book one of the color higher important coloring books I don't have the coloring book but I need, needed this image and seeing I'm not gonna sell it on I'm going to use it for my own use I thought this was going to be okay to use for this purpose. Now, I thought I needed two sheets of acetate, but this is pretty thick acetate, so I'm just gonna go with one. I've got some rubbing alcohol on this cloth, and I'm just gonna clean the whole surface with that. The image is at the back. But I want to make sure that I have no grease marks on here. So with all these colors, I should be able to achieve what I want to achieve because I can also mix them. So um, let's get started. So I can be pretty precise with these paints, as you can see here with these little trees. And uh, I actually really like how they apply. They are not too tricky if you if you get enough paint on your paintbrush. And um, I actually do like them. Now I've colored the entire piece, which looks pretty cool. 
and I just need to let it dry now but these parts need to be all black like the lines in between so I have this art PBO artist paint marker which is oil based and by the looks of it I've got a little tester sheet here it does pretty well on acetate so I'm just gonna use that to color that in So this is all dry now and I'm really happy with what this, look, what this looks like right now. So what I will do for the bigger outlines and water and around her, I will go over with this paste at the very end. But first, for all the fine details like those little waves in the water and her face and the lines in her hair and on her body and in the waves here as well and on the castle and the and the trees I'm gonna go in with this St Stedler Permanent Luma corner, uh, Color uh, Wow! <laughs> Stedler Permanent Luma Color Marker This is a permanent marker and a finer tip than that and I'm gonna add in all the fine details with this one I've lined everything with uh, this liner so far and I'm so happy with how it looks. It's beyond what I was thinking. Um, I obviously have to still remove this and then it will be see-through. All right, let's move on to the next part. So I have the finished painting here. I'm calling it the painting. I did not use this paste because I don't think it needs it because what I want to do is place this piece of acetate on top so it doesn't damage. So this will then be placed inside. Like so. On the inside I will be putting these, they're just pieces of cardstock. Like that. And this is also a piece of cardstock, very thick. It's basically chipboard, that's what we call it here. And this then sits in here, very snug on, on top of these beams that I put on the side. And inside there, there will also be lights. So right now you cannot see the lights, but this is what it looks like so far. And this is what the inside looks like. And this way I can always remove it and replace the lights if I ever need to because I don't have to glue this down because it's secure by itself. Before I do this, however, I want to paint the box and I think I'm going to stain it a very dark brown. Now that I've stained the entire box, like that, it is time to glue the mermaid in. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac glue. I don't need a lot because the box will kind of hold it in place. And then I'm going to apply the same glue on the box. And put the mermaid into place. I'm going to glue these ones into place and I don't need to paint them because you're not going to see them in the end. But I do need to glue them into place. So, also with the Fabri-Tac glue. This is just a glue I trust most for this kind of stuff. And that's it for that. And then the lights I'm going to attach with hot glue, otherwise it won't stick. I might not attach them with hot glue, 
because I don't want this acetate to melt, just in case my hot glue gets very, very hot. The front is done. The lights are in. Their lights are on right now. It's just very hard to see with the other lights on. And the way it works now is I've got this little ribbon here that I attached, which I can just lift up. There are four magnets, one in each corner and four magnets there and the lights are attached there. I used super glue to glue onto the acetate and it worked fine. Now I can just switch it on and off whenever I want. The battery pack is nice and concealed and I can just close it like that. Obviously I need some shelving for my potion cabinet and what better material to use for that than balsa wood because I want it to look like wood and this way it has the texture and look of wood and I can just cut it to size and make the shelving as I go. It's easy to cut as well then with the potion bottles and whatever else I want to put on the shelves I can just place it as I go. It just requires some measuring and cutting. I have to cut out now. You can see how easily that fits. I just need to cut out a few more. I might have a rod at the top to have some drying herbs or something like that. You can't really see up the top at um, the potion shelf, the potion cabinet, but I can imagine having them drying in a cool and dark place. So um, I'm going to cut out a few more and then I'll be back. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with what this looks like. So it's about that. And, oops, there. I'm gonna make a bench there. And then I might glue everything in. What I might do though, is make the shells a little bit more shallow and then have a little letter there as well. Cause there's a letter in Snape's um, storeroom. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to paint them. So shorten them, make them more shallow and paint them. And then moving on to the letter. This is just a piece of dowel and it's seriously jammed in there without gluing it down. What I wanna make now is labels for the potion bottles. So I have a, just a sheet of printer paper here. I have Distress Ink by Tim Holtz old paper and gather twigs. What I'm going to do first is crumple this up until it's like the consistency of fabric. So scrunch it up and then unfold it. And do the same thing again and you keep going until these wrinkles are smaller and smaller and smaller all right now we've got this nice fabric -like consistency what i'm going to do with these is going to dab them on this sheet this is a tim holtz working mat but you can also get them barbecue mats they work as well as long as it's like one of those heat resistant mats I have them in my Amazon shop in the link in the description. Amazon storefront, if you're looking for that. You can't see it, but there's ink on there. And then we're gonna spray it. And you're gonna place this on top. Scrunch it up a little, work it in. Make sure you don't rip the paper because it's super fragile. Just move it a little bit. And I'm going to dry it with a hairdryer. This paper is still a little bit damp, but it's mostly dry. I'm going to do this again with just the gathered twigs because I know that that one will give me that two-tone look. And now we have a much darker effect. So I'm going to dry this again. And I think this will be it then for the labels for the paper coloring. I still need to write all the labels, of course, but let's dry it first. So here we have the dry piece of paper, but 
I want to add a little bit more dark tone. So I'm just going to go slightly over with a dauber. Dauber, whatever you call it. Uh, to uh, add some more depth there to the labels, label paper. And there we have perfectly aged paper. Um, a bit more aged than what you usually see, of course, but this one is one of the larger potion bottles, so I'll be showing you what I'm doing with all of them. Obviously, I need to fill it at some point. I take this and I'll measure how long this needs to be. You can, of course, print them, but I wanted to make my own. Whatever takes your fancy, really, in the design of them. You can do a white label as well, like that. I might actually do that because that's nice. And do the same for the other one. And then before I glue it on, I'm going to write what is on there. So I think for this one, what am I gonna do? Just gonna write Gillyweed on there. I have a 005 micron pen here, which is a 0.2 mil line. Bit of decoration around the edge. And then we have our first label, which I'm going to apply there. You have seen me make potion bottles before, real size ones, and I'm going to decorate all of these with mainly labels. I want to keep it simple and come back to you and show them all after. So for the next part, I'm going to work at the top here. What I'm going to do is hang some of these dried, or it's not dried, this one is dry, but it's like moss from the top, so it looks like drying herbs and plants. I've got some lichen here as well. So I'm going to hang some here and probably some little chains as well, whatnots. And I think I'm just going to attach them with embroidery thread. So I just tied a little piece of embroidery thread around it. And now I can thread this through and attach it. So I kind of forgot that I could take the rod out so as soon as I showed you putting this first one on I just took the rod out and put all the bits on and they're just tied together with um, embroidery thread and some of them are secured with some glue and now I can just place this inside here there we go there we have some hanging herbs now I can place the potion bottles in. And then after placing them in, I'm going to add the rods just at the front there. Okay, let me guide you through all the potion bottles that I've created. These are doxy eggs with just some little beads in there. Excuse my nails, they're a bit brown from inking some herb pages, which I will show you in a minute. Snake fangs with some polymer clay fangs in there. Wolfsbane with the same kind of wrap around as I did with the big potion bottles. And also all of these labels I created myself. It's my own writing and just some dyed paper. Not grass, which is just some stuff that I found in a park on the floor. Essence of Dittany with a little chain around it. There's just some um, Mod Podge in the bottom. It's not completely dry yet, but I'm okay with that. Leeches, which is just some diluted acrylic paint. Um, they might be floating around in there with a little chain around it. Some Econite, which is some fluffy weed that I found in the area here. Granian hair, which is um, grayish, silverish, fluffy yarn. Mandrake uh, restorative draft, which is also some mud podge. Valerian, it's a little fake plant in there. I'm not sure if you can actually see that. This is asphodel. Nettles, which is another bit of plant that I found here draft of living death this was supposed to be see-through but it's okay and a little uh, skull on the top of it salt so actually sand i put in lavender which are real lavender buds and a piece of string agrippa 
and the other one is red splains. This is some seaweed, sea kind of stuff that my father-in-law found uh, on the beach. So picked up a little bit of that. This is wort cap powder, which is just powder of uh, chalk pastel. And so is this, which is powdered bone. Tar, black acrylic paint. Leech juice, again, diluted ac acrylic paint. Horn of bicorn. This is more of that chalk pastel powder. Spider legs. This is paper bark that we found on in the park here. On the, lying on the floor, we would not rip it off the tree. And I just put a little bit in here as being boomslang skin and a little bit in here as being spider legs because it's those little cutoffs. This is pepper potion with a bit of twine around the top and on the inside is glass paint. Same for this one, which is Veritas, Verita Serum. That's just green glass paint. Lace wing flies and I put a cut up feather in there. These are the ends of toothpicks and the label reads Billywig Sting. This is dirigible plums. These are foam, styrofoam bowls and they're orange and they make wonderful dirigible plums. This is, I think this is just acrylic paint in there for uh, a rampant potion. This is lichen for fluxweed and gillyweed is just a fake plant here. And then we have hemlock, which is another bottle of this same stuff as in the aconite. And uh, I put a bit of chain around that because hemlock in real life is very poisonous. So I thought this would be a nice addition to that. Now I'm going to place all the potions in and these are gonna go on this side here where the removable flap is for the lights because I didn't want to leave it empty. So I have a, a map and some herbal pages. There's loads of herbal pages and miniature witchy herb books that you can find on Etsy. And that's where I got these from. So I just cut a few out and I will also be adding some books. Of course, I wanted this book to have a title as well. So I've printed this and the writer as well. And I'm going to place that, I think, like so. I have some white tracing paper. It's like carbon paper, but then white. And that will show up on the, on the dark wood. And then I think the book box is done. And this is it for the mermaid book box. I wonder if I should make one for every movie in the Harry Potter franchise. I really enjoyed working on this project that I've been wanting to create for a while and I hope you enjoyed watching. All my other social media can be found in the description box below and if you're new here, welcome! Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and of course become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!